There was a perception at the beginning of last season that the Blackhawks had lost a, a whole lot of uh, quality players from the year before. Among, I think, fans, there was this perception that the team was really going to have taken a big step backwards from that. But there were a lot of veterans that were still part of the 2013-14 Blackhawks, uh, beginning with Captain Tim Lappin and goaltender Cal Peterson. And I, I think it ended up being something like a dozen players who'd been part of the team the year before, who'd had a, a season that came to a, what they would have considered a premature end. Coming from that, with all that experience, with, uh, with all that, um, that sense of not having enjoyed as much success as they would have liked or expected, uh, I think that there was a very strong sense at the beginning of the season that in the locker room they felt like they had every chance and every motivation to be a better team. We knew we had the makings of a good team. I, I think when you start with goaltending, which we knew we had in Cal Peterson, I, I think it's a, it's a good feeling from a coaching perspective. It's a good feeling from an organizational perspective. And I thought we had the right mix of guys coming out of camp. Um, you know, do you think at that point you have a, have a chance to win a championship? I think that's your goal. Uh, but, you know, a lot of things have to go right. And, a lot of things have to fall your way, but we felt pretty good about the personnel we had. And, uh, you know, it obviously it showed uh, in the end that uh, maybe we were pretty much right on. Uh, the beginning of the season, uh, we had a lot of, a good group of returners and a lot of new faces in the, in the locker room. And really, um, our level of expectation was, was uh, set high from the very beginning. I mean, we, uh, we took a couple of games to kind of find our way, but, um, once we, uh, once we got going there, we realized our full potential and we realized the sky was the limit. Off the skate of Horton, who's able to turn and find it, then snap a pass out to Friedman. Coming up left wing, he's able to gain the line. With a wrist shot, save, and a puck pushed just wide. Now Horton a shot, he scores! Jake Horton got the loose puck, but John but, uh, At the end of the day, they, they were... Uh... They were a family, uh, maybe an overused uh, term in sports today, but they were. They, they believed in each other and they had each other's back and, and they would do about anything to make sure that, that each other was successful. I thought the selflessness uh, of the group was, uh, when you sit back and look at it, how it unfolded, they, they were not a selfish bunch, Self, selfless and, and uh, caring about what they were doing. and uh, they, they, they came within you know, 12 minutes of, of the ultimate. Every successful group or business or team in life has chemistry. Everybody knows their role and, and really a player on a team, someone in the workforce, whatever it may be, like you have, you have two jobs, you know, to accept your role and to execute it. And I think that those are two very, very important things that, that anybody can learn. And I think that's one thing that we learned quickly last year. It didn't take us very long to learn to Know, know your role on the team and play it to your best of your abilities. There's a game in particular, I remember it, uh, we went into Sioux Falls and we, uh, it was a come from behind victory. Uh, it was kind of a game where we look back on it and it really turned our season around. Uh, it was a big shootout win with a goal by Hayden Shaw. And that really sparked our team and after that we went on a 17 game winning streak. And it was, that was something special, I mean breaking records with a group of guys. and. Um, every day, you know, we came to work and it was a business-like atmosphere here, a business-like setting and um, we had specific goals in mind and, and you know what, we weren't going to let anything derail the mission. And, um, I think that's when we became close. I, I think it all ultimately comes to the players in the room. And the players in the room decided that, that they were going to get as far as they could get and win as much as they could win and, and do it in a fashion that was uh, the right way. They played hard, uh, they played for each other. The skill was there, but it was hard skill. We knew we had a lot of skill. You know, we had a, a, like every guy except two guys were committed to Division One colleges, and, and and we knew we had the pieces to the puzzle. It was just about putting that puzzle together. It was a nail-biting race. Uh, it went right down in the last weekend of the regular season. Uh, there was a a big moment there where things could have turned completely the other direction in the third week in March. The Blackhawks had a couple of home games against the Fargo Force. Fargo was last in the USHL in the standings and the Hawks were on home ice. They'd won the first four games of the season against Fargo and that was an opportunity for Waterloo to really seize control of the race and, and make it their championship to win. Fargo won both games 
and that really threw everything into question as far as the standings. The Hawks lost some control of their destiny in terms of uh, finishing on top. Of course, they uh, got a little bit of help down the stretch and won the games that they needed to win after that weekend. And it was it was, you know, by far the the greatest championship that I've won so far, and you know, I definitely think that uh, the Anderson Cup is is a great. Um, a bit of a landmark for our, for our whole season, if you were to put it in that context. It was pretty special to come together as a group like that, um, to put a pretty special season together, and to be able to um, be awarded with the Anderson Cup. Back in for Krieger, back to Pecoraro, back for Krieger one more time, didn't find him, Pecoraro shoots and scores! It boomeranged right back to Pecoraro when the puck didn't get through to Krieger, and for the second consecutive period, Liam Pecoraro scores less than a minute out of the dressing room. It's 5 nothing Waterloo. The series turned on Indiana's win in double overtime in game two. The Blackhawks had won game one. They protected home ice. They've been very good about protecting home ice throughout the first two rounds of the playoffs against Sioux Falls and Sioux City. And I think when Indiana was able to get that win, it, it really changed the series around. They were then able to win game three on their home ice. The Hawks pushed it to game four, or pushed it to game, from game four to game five with a big win in game number four. Um, but then once you get into that game five situation, and the Hawks have, have seen this over the years a, a few times, in that game five situation, anything can happen. And uh, they're usually close, they're usually very tense, and uh, this was one that just it went the other direction. It was probably the most intense uh, game I've ever played. Um, it was a packed house really close game with two really good teams. Um, coming out on the wrong end wasn't fun, but uh, I think our team really did leave everything on the ice, which was a pretty special thing to do. Intense. I think that's the best word you can put it. Um, you know, we, we got down on the series and battled our way back, and we learned a lot about ourselves in that series. Like, uh, it, it's, it's a series where you're going to learn a lot about yourself. You're going to see who has the true guts and, and who who's really going to stand out and play their game. And that last series was part of probably some of the best hockey I've ever played in, both two powerhouse teams and depth throughout the lineup. And it was definitely a fun series to play. And you know what? They're a good team, and I, I mean, you got to hand it to them. They, uh, you know, they they went out on top, especially like leaving the league. But um, it was tough for us, and uh, but it didn't take anything away from our season and the uh, the bond that we kind of created within the uh, within the organization and, and uh, kind of the records that we set because uh, that was something special. You know, it's a passionate fan base here, and, and um, you know, I think to a, to some degree it was it was maybe perceived as as a bit of a failure, but I, I would I would say absolutely not. It was it was a successful of a of a season, and, and that may ever be seen again from from a team in Waterloo. Going to draw Winicky left wing boards with a shot that didn't make it on net. Lappin finds it, fed it in front, it's jabbed into the net by McClellan. Here come the Hawks! Waterloo scores! in the corner at the left side of his net and Sanford slips it to center. Here's Montour coming to the Sioux City line, drops it off for Pecoraro, steps in from the hash marks, he shoots, he scores! Here come the Hawks! Send it across trying to find Melanson again, this time the pass is tipped. Melanson recovers it off the glass for Friedman, a shot from the point, now she he scores! Here come the Hawks! It deflected in front, maybe off of Sanford, but... Snaps a pass ahead for Winicky, crossing the line. Winicky. Drops it back, Montour with a lane, shooting. Kicked aside by Tyrone, rebound, Waterloo scores! Milan. We'll go down in history here as one of the best teams that ever played, not only in Waterloo, but I think the USHL.